everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to Sam's Trains Live for the final stream in this series, which is sad, I like doing these and it's kind of going to be a little bit empty on a Sunday not doing these after this, but Sam's Trains Live will be back one day and of course I am going to be replacing this slot uh, on the Monday night as usual with a regular video which uh, are hopefully going to be entertaining as well. So welcome everybody, how is everybody doing? We are here for one last time this spring and it is awesome to see so many people in the chat. I have got quite an exciting live stream lined up for you today. Obviously I've got the usual requests and locos to run live for you which should be fun. But I've also got a review to do, not done a proper review during one of these streams recently, so that's coming up today. And of course, as always, I'm going to be doing shout outs, so jump in the chat if you'd like a shout out and we'll do some of those. And also I'm going to be showing off some of your wonderful artwork and drawings and such later on as well. Now requests are open as always, and thank you so much to everyone who has submitted a request already today. The thing is, because this is the last stream in the series, this stream will fill up and then any request that I get that doesn't fit into this stream will have to be carried over onto the next series, which won't be for several months. So if you want to super chat, you can do, and thank you so much for the support to the channel, but only do that if you're happy for it to be potentially a long time. Um, so yes, be warned, but thank you so much for the support. And if you want to support the channel, you absolutely can do, and, to the most creative requester of today, I've got quite an interesting thing to give away, and it is this. It's deliberately impossible to tell what this is, because this is the next Sam's Trains product to be publicly launched. It's not going out for quite some time yet, it's going to be a good few months because I've got quite a few of them to make, and they're not going to be ready for a bit, but the most creative request requester for this stream will be able to get this early and only you will find out what it is and there is also an accessories bag included and here's a clue you will at least get a clue in here are barrels and that's all you get to find out so come up with a creative request and you alone will find out what the next product is and you will get one before anybody else which I think is pretty exciting um, and also if you want a birthday song playing for anyone who's got a birthday recently or around this area um, in the near future super chat any amount and let me know and I'll play it and upset everybody's ears so hopefully you look forward to that uh, anyway how is everybody doing thank you so much sideways 66779 for the request um, great central a5 that's a good request um, I like that one. Uh, so that's definitely in the running. Um, Arts Toys and Trains with Levi says yes. Awesome stuff. Barrel says Mr. Diabolical. Resin printed barrels as well. And incidentally, they were a lot of fun to design. It's an interesting shape with quite a bit of complexity to it. Thoroughly enjoyed doing that. And uh, Normal Jungle 272, it might be explosive. It might, it might not. I, I ain't saying. JW Studios, welcome to you. There's a shout out as well. Kelly Ashford's got the same idea, saying there's no gunpowder in them, is there? I, I don't know, Kelly. I don't know. I guess whoever gets it will find out. Uh, but um, just in the interests of health and safety, I should say no is the answer to that. But, but, but unofficially, the answer is maybe. Who knows? Good morning to Derek M. Hopefully you're all right. Stan Shares is good. That's nice to see. Caleb Chen Chan says that it's 7 a.m. where they are. That's early. Well, thanks for getting up uh, for this one. Uh, Matthew Damon is asking for train time, not today, unfortunately. I'm finding it a little bit tricky to get to the uh, the good team at train time to send another person over here to do them. Uh, they've got concerns that the series is making them look like buffoons, to use their word, not mine, um, which is confusing to me. I mean, I let them do whatever it is they want on a train time episode, but that's what they think. So I'll keep trying to persuade them and we'll see what uh, what happens next time. Uh, Azuma says, Sam, where is Chloe today? Well, I know that Chloe's watching, or she said she was gonna. Maybe that's a lie, I don't know. Not that Chloe's a liar. But she, she is poorly today, she is unwell. So she's at home with her pug, 
recuperating and I'm gonna head over to see her after this stream and uh, make sure she's doing good but uh, shout out to Chloe hope you're feeling better and I'll see you later and normal jungle 272 is playing some trains 2019 not played trains with a Z for a long time uh, yeah how is it and I'm pretty sure I didn't play 2019 either I had an older version so maybe it's time to jump back in uh, or no, no, I did. I have played I have played a more recent version than that, haven't I? But not for some time. Anyway, let's run some trains. We've got the first request. Well, it's on the middle line, but we'll start with it uh, because I liked it a lot. Tagart00 requested this. They wanted to see the Blue Peter, which is the Peppercorn A2. Um, I don't actually have Blue Peter, so I've just got my Backman A2 with some passenger coaches to... Well, to commemorate the fact that the real Blue Peter has just been restored and back in service. And actually, if you look up on YouTube, um, I forget what the railway is called now. That's really bad. Um, you can see it testing live, or at least you could a few days ago. So we've got that. The average railway fan wanted to three see an O3 diesel with some tankers. So I've set that up. And then Beaglington on Sea wanted to see the B4 jersey with uh, my converter car and a Royal Mail coach. I think they also probably wanted one of the larger Royal Mail coaches. And I do have one of those, but the problem is the mechanism that activates the opening mail door um, gets caught on the ballast. If you've got ballast to track, it actually doesn't work very well. And the little B4 couldn't haul it. So I had to miss that off, unfortunately but I managed to do the rest of the request. And I've also got an O-gauge request to do during this section from Sparky129, so I'll do that shortly. But first we'll have a quick check out of this. So there's the A2 with a bit of a passenger train, and following it we have the Backman 03 with its lovely, lovely train of tankers. I like tankers. I, I wish I had a few more similar looking tankers so that I could put a bigger train of them together, because uh, like I say, I, I like them. Tankers are cool. And uh, where's that other train? I can't quite see it. Perhaps it's disappeared. There's Sparky's request anyway up on the shelves. They wanted to see my favourite O-gauge model with just two wagons because he says he likes just seeing short trains. So that's cool by me, no problem. And uh, I'll come and give that uh, a quick spin in just a second once we've had a good look at uh, each of these. And I'm just waiting for the O3 to appear. There it goes. Should get it going past there. There you have it. And I have spotted the B4. It's still going strong, which is good. And here that is. All right. <laughs> With the, what's, he, what's his name? Constipated Colin seated at the back. Um, not my favourite wagon, to say the least. But um, at least it's working okay. That's the main thing. At least the Era 1, that's true of all of the Era 1 stuff, actually. It does work well. All right. For Sparky, let's get the O-Gauge Loco running. So I think this was quite an easy choice. The Dapol B4, uh, I th it's definitely the best. It's definitely the best O-Gauge Loco I've got. I also think it's probably my favorite. Um, I would say it probably is, yeah. The 1400 is up there as well. I really like that one, but I think this B4 is better than it. and. When you hold it in your hands and feel the weight of it and the quality, given how, how little it cost, um, I think it has to be my favourite. Dapol did an incredible job. It's one of the best ever Dapol Locos, I think, the O-Gauge B4. And uh, I'd love to take mine to a, a different layout sometime where there's lots of space and couple it up to like 30 wagons and watch it haul them, which I'm sure it would do with ease because it weighs a tonne. I think, it's been a while since I reviewed it now, but I think it is also my heaviest O-Gauge Loco, even though it's far from my largest. So, yeah, an easy choice, not really a difficult one at all. By far the best O-Gauge Loco I've ever personally seen. I'm sure there are better ones, uh, you know, some of the 500 quid ones, and by the looks of it, the, the Ellis Clark job, that's uh, fantastic as well. But in terms of the ones I've I've tried and owned, uh, yeah, there's nothing better than that. And there's Big Tomo. Thank you very much. Just spotted that one. Uh, could I have a class 66 of your choice, followed by the Acura Scale 37, pulling a rake of cream and chocolate mark one, please? Yes, no problem. Thank you so much. Uh, as I said earlier on, I guess I'll keep repeating that throughout today's stream, just in case people aren't aware. This is the last one in the series, so anything that doesn't get done today will get done eventually. 
but it will be on the first episode of the next series, which is going to be several months away. So um, don't request if you don't want to wait that long. Um, but if you do, thank you very much for your support. So let us move on. And I first of all got a bit of a question to ask. Um, someone super chatted a question last time. It was the average railway fan, and I don't believe I answered it. So their question was, there have been many models made over the years, some dating back several decades, which is true. My question is, what is the oldest model you would purchase? Well, I got two answers. The first answer is a bit disappointing, but it's basically there isn't an oldest model I would purchase. I would purchase absolutely anything for historical interest. Whether I could run it on any of my track setups is another question, because a lot of the old stuff is not compatible with the new stuff. But um, yeah, there's no limit to how old a model is that I would buy. Uh, I'm interested in all models, and uh, particularly the old ones, really. Yeah, I would say particularly the old ones. But I can show you the oldest one that I have got. Um, I forget exactly what year it was created in, but it's one of the Hornby Clockwork ones. Uh, it's not one of the oldest Hornby Clockwork ones. It's actually slightly newer than quite a few of the original Hornby Clockwork engines. Um, but I believe this is the oldest I have purchased to date. I think this was created in the 1940s, although there are some that go back to the 20s. And I do have a video, full video of this on my channel. Um, it's quite an interesting loco and a real departure from the types of engine that I usually look at on this channel. So if you're interested in something a bit different, clockwork of course, with real cab controls. I don't think it's wound up, but could give it a try. No. Nope. Not doing anything <laughs> but um, yeah it does work and when I want to wind it up with a key uh, it goes and with quite some gusto as well so there you go hopefully that answers your question and thank you very much for the support so for now then I have I mentioned that I've got a review to do in this episode and so without any further ado here comes that right now Recently, I noticed a wagon in Hornby's current range that I've never actually tried before, and so I decided to give it a try. It is this, a pallet van in the Shelfstar livery. And as you can tell by the packaging, this is in the Hornby Railways range, except it's very affordable to buy. The RRP was £23.99, and I bought this from Hatton's for £21.59, so pretty cheap by Hornby's usual standards. Let's open this up and let's see what this is like. So if you're interested in exactly what this is, let me show you the end of the box. So it's product code R60105. It is the Shellstar Proctor Pallet Van UKF. And that's all we know. So let's open this up and let's see if this is any good. I'm not expecting a dreadfully complex model, but then at the same time, this was not in the Hornby Railroad range, which means there is also an expectation for kind of quality and detail. So accessories, there are none. Fair enough. Let's open it up immediately. Take a look at the finish, which is very plasticky. Okay, and let's lift this up, and there it is. All right, so first thing I'm noticing, yeah, it's really, really plasticky, and there's not a lot of detail on here. We've also got the old massive D-type couplings, which are not NEM and not interchangeable. Now, for 20-odd quid, I guess this is okay, but at the same time, why is this in the railways range? That is absolutely bizarre. It's clearly a very, very old model, very dated in its details and features. Why isn't this just in the railroad range? Anyway, let's take a closer look at some of its details. So clearly this is a very basic model, and in my opinion, it has no right whatsoever to be in the Hornby Railways range. But other than that, for just over £20, this is a perfectly acceptable budget offering. Except for the couplings, of course. I think any Hornby model that still has these couplings should either be retired or upgraded, because they look bad and they don't work that great either. The decoration is absolutely fine, except for the plasticky finish. As you can see, we've got some decent print work on this model, which is actually pretty complex for the price. The detail, though, is extremely basic. It relies more or less entirely on moulded detail, which doesn't look that crisp these days. Very small number of separately fitted parts, such as this turning wheel, which has got brown paint all over it. And we've got just plastic buffers, which are not sprung. The underframe is also pretty unimpressive as well, with very few details here. The bogey detail is okay though, and it does have metal wheels. 
and I'm quite interested to see how well this runs, so let's get this down onto the track and find out. Thanks to its quality metal wheels, the free rolling performance is absolutely fantastic. In fact, it made it an unprecedented distance down Gordon's Hill. So free rolling, a massive tick, not a problem with that. Let's check how the couplings work. Let's back up the Batman Class 20. And I've also got a Rapido Vix Ferry Van there as well. No, seem to have struggled to couple there. Let's have a look. Nope, we're okay. That was by fault. We've got no coupling on that end of the Class 20. So. Yeah, even though the couplings are incompatible, it does seem to have worked okay. So let's go off around the layout. So here it goes around the track, and it does seem to be absolutely fine, to be fair to it. Yep, nice and reliable. You've got to be quite careful with what locomotive you couple it up to because of the coupling incompatibility. But apart from that, it seems to be a perfect performer. So let's have some ratings. First of all, level of detail, two star. It gets those two because of the decoration, which is pretty good. Otherwise though, very little detail on this. Shouldn't have been in the railways range. Belongs in the railroad plus range at the best. Performance is five star though, perfectly freewheeling. Dated couplings, yes, but it does work perfectly fine. The quality for me is two star though, not great quality. Plastic construction, no bearings on the axles or anything like that. No NEM couplings and the very few parts that are separately fitted are done quite messily. Value for money, yeah this is fine for the money, it's not a problem at all. It's not a bargain because it's not up to Hornby Railway standards, but yeah for just over 20 quid can't fault it. So that is 5.82 out of 10, or a grade of F, not far off an E but it is an F. And into the logbook it goes, second place above the Liverpool and Manchester Royal Mail Coach and below the Backman Crane. Can I recommend this? Well, if you're on a budget, yes. If you're a more serious modeler and you see this at a train fair and it's at a reasonable price and you think it's a bargain, then no, it's a railroad loco in the wrong packaging. But otherwise, it looks decent from a distance and it does run well. Well, there you go then, folks. Let's know, <laughs> oh dearie me, I seem to have perfected the art of ventriloquism, um, which I wish was true, but alas is a lie, I'm going to twitch weirdly, there we go, I am back. Anyway, uh, uh, brr, let me know what you think about that then. Beaglington on Sea says, quite rightly, it shouldn't have been difficult to modify the bogey mouldings for NEM without a full body retooling. And that is correct, yes, those bogies could quite easily have been modified to take NEM couplings and then a lot of my complaints, aside from it being put in the railways range instead of the railroad range where it belongs, the railroad range, um, then yeah, a lot of my complaints would have been uh, rectified with that. Those couplings, just they have no place in model railways anymore, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, if Hornby had a whole sort of railroad range that used those then I could probably understand it but uh, they don't they sort of mix and match between uh, based on laziness in not updating old models which I don't think is um, very acceptable. Al's Yard thank you very much happy stream finale the closest thing we have to small Caledonian coaches do you mean CR Caledonian Railway I guess in livery are the LNWR coaches so could you run those with the 812? That sounds great, I will do that. Thank you very much, Al's Yard, much appreciated. And JW, you right, yeah, I did notice that during that last section, I did call it a railroad loco. That was a misspeaking. Um, that's just force of habit, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, anyway, uh, I wouldn't buy that, says Mr. Diabolical. Yeah, it, it wasn't really what I expected either. Um, for the money, it would have been fine, I think, if it had the, the NEM couplings, but that cuts a lot of people off if it doesn't have those. Um, yeah, Sir Frederick Banbury is right. I wish more manufacturers would have three link couplings in the box like Oxford. Absolutely. Or chain link, if that's more appropriate for whatever model it is. Oxford Rail, some of the cheapest open wagons on the market, and other wagons too, and yet they supply those couplings in most cases, actually certainly with the open wagons, where other manufacturers don't, and I think that's a pity. That's something that a lot of them could do better, especially given the price of some of those. Um, Paul Burrow says, I'm a big fan of you. Well, thank you, Paul. It's lovely to have you on board. Much appreciated. And no problem, Stan Shares. Uh, he says, thanks for calling me out. I really enjoy your vid. Well, you got yourself another right there. No problem at all. Um, Alex says, not for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. You know, if, if you like your detail and you, you like, I don't know, if, if you're someone who likes a Cura Scales level of uh, quality and detail, it's definitely not going to be for you. 
But the thing is, if you see the RRP on Hornby's website, you can probably guess that it's not that incredible, <laughs> you know. But if you see it at, a, at an exhibition or something and you see 20 quid, you might think, oh, Hornby Railways, that packaging looks modern. I'm going to pick that up. That seems like a steal. Um, and that's really where the problems are. It's a bit misleading in that department, I would say. Um, but anyway, let's move on. I got some more trains to run during that review. I was scurrying around setting this lot up. So we've got Sparky129 who wanted to see the H1 Atlantic with some Pullman's Antiques. Uh, they think those liveried coaches uh, match quite nicely with the H1. And I think you're correct. Yeah, they do look fantastic. Then we have Sparky129 again who wanted to see the turbomotive with a freight train with the Queen Mary and the Bullman. I don't know if you can see those latter two, but they are there. You'll see them when it runs in a second. And then we have an interesting one from ECD Railroad who's uh, suggested something new. I'm pretty sure I've never done this before, and I do like to point out when I think something is original. And that is to see Mavis with the Wisbeach and Upwell Tramway coaches. And I'm gonna put that in as a contender for the most creative request because, yep, takes quite a bit of thinking to do something that's never been done on these requests before because next series will be coming up to the 100th episode of Sam's Trains Live. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite something to keep coming up with these things that have never been done on stream before. So nice work. Let's see how we get on with this lot. Uh, I'm gonna try and unfreeze this camera so that we can see what's happening through it. I'm gonna see if I can replace this capture card at some point. It's a dodgy Chinese one, which does work well when it's working, but the problem is that's not very often, as you'll probably have noticed through these streams. So um, yeah, lesson learned, I suppose. But anyway, we've got the turbo motive looking good. Uh, this, this actually, to be fair, speaking of doing things for the first time, has, have I done this before in a live stream? Run the turbo motive with freight? I can't recall, that's the other problem, I've got a bad memory, but I'm pretty sure possibly not, and certainly not with Mavis, because the uh, the Wispeach and Upwell coaches are pretty new. But there we go, nice work. Seems I've, lo I've lost an M coupling somehow behind the bookcase. That's in an awkward spot as well, I'm going to struggle to reach that. So one day I'll try and get it. Um, not today though. <laughs> that's not the sort of thing I'm going to do on camera, because it's not a pleasant sight watching me squeeze puffing and panting behind the buff bookcase yeah <laughs> not one of my favorite things to have to do either but uh, anyway this is all working nicely we'll we'll let them have a couple of laps i suppose and uh, i'll read some more of the chat get some final shout outs in uh, before this series is over as uh, the last i can't believe we've come to the last episode again i've been doing this every week for over a month like a month and a half actually but it's just uh, gone, just like that, in the click of the finger. Turbo motive is meh, says Mayo Hosco. Well, it certainly costs a lot of money, but it's got a lot of features to it, that's for sure. Um, Arts, Toys and Trains with Levi agrees that it was a good request. That's good to hear, I think so too. Sam Haslam's going out for dinner. Oh, sorry, got to go and have dinner, not necessarily going out. Well, let us know what you have, Sam. Hope you have a, a nice dinner. Um, Ah uh, yes, and Trainboy, I did see this a minute ago, I think he's posted this a few times. The railway that Blue Peter is running at is the Seven Valley Railway, and that's correct. Uh, I think it was Adam Rushton who brought this to my attention to start with. They've got a whole load of live cameras, webcams, which are live on YouTube. Uh, I don't know when, I don't know if it's permanently or at certain times, but they certainly do. Lots of cameras all over the railway at the different stations and along the track so that you can drop in and see what's happening on the railway at any given time. And the other day, it was Thursday I was looking, they had Blue Peter testing on the railway and uh, you could watch her going up and down, uh, which is very exciting. So yeah, Blue, Blue Peter, not been in service for a long time now, uh, is back on the tracks again. So it's good news. And everything's fine on here right now. Yeah, we've got Bullman even behaving himself, which is a rare thing indeed. Very pleased. So when everything gets back to the front, we'll bring it to a halt, and we'll see if uh, see if this camera is working again or if it's frozen. It has indeed frozen. Excellent. Oh, well, that's another thing going in the bin soon, then, isn't it? That capture card, man. Goodness sake. Never does this during testing, you know. I, I switch it on during testing. Works fine. 
Seems to be only when I'm actually live that it happens, which is very strange. Okay, turbo motive. Let's do a bit of a speedy turbo motive finish. And uh, I think I'll whip turbo off while we're waiting for the, well, for Mavis to come back. All right. There's Mavis right now. Cool stuff. So I will go for a little break and then when we come back, I'll run some more trains. I've got lots more cool requests left over from last week, actually, which I'll show you in just a second. And of course, I've also got some of your artwork and drawings and such for, for the Wall of Fame to show. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in just a second and we'll continue with this live stream. All right. Cheers, folks. I'll be back very shortly. All right, folks, we are back. Thank you for your patience. Oh, and I've not frozen this time, too. That's a pleasant change. Right, let's jump into the chat, see how everybody is doing. This is interesting from Springtrap EXE. Hi, Sam, I've been working on restoring a vintage Riverossi 280. Interesting, I'll take my hat off to you. I'm upgrading it to a 130 motor. Any special wiring I need uh, to keep it from tripping my Hornby controller? Um, I'm not familiar with the 130 motor, but most Hornby controllers are rated for a reasonably high output. I think the cheapo train set controllers, those ones have the lowest, but you can actually get more out of them than they're rated for without them tripping into the short circuit mode. So, no, there's not a lot you can really do to stop it shorting uh, or making the controller think that it's, that it's shorted. Um, if it is doing that, maybe you could put a power resistor in series with the motor, potentially. Obviously, though, that would sort of throttle the motor. So really, you're just going to want a, a different controller if it is having problems. Uh, but if it's not, then happy days. I would recommend something from Gauge Master or poss possibly the HM. I, all these HMs are confusing me now, but the HM2000, I think it is, um, which has a higher current output than the cheap train set controllers but it all depends on which one specifically you've got um, <laughs> William Downs has throw away those Chinese cameras it's not the cameras themselves it's just the uh, the HDMI capture card of that one camera uh, that's not very good it used to be fine though it, I've, it's only sort of more recently that it's been reliably messing up uh, JMW Studios for today's challenge could you run the Rapido Lion with some of your best era one rolling stock Cheers, Jasper and Willow. Well, thank you very much. I will do that, no problem. Uh, let's see. Would you ever consider reviewing a 009 locomotive since they can run on N-gauge tracks, says the Railway Jolteon. Well, that is absolutely true. They can. And yes, I've already filmed my first two 009 reviews, both locomotives. One was okay. One was, well, in fact, no, let's scratch that. One was incredible. The other one was a little on the naff side. I won't tell you what they were or who made them. Um, and my next job is going to be rolling stock. Need to get some of that. JNW says, what does HM stand for in terms of the controllers? That's Hammett and Morgan. They used to be a controller manufacturer. I think that's all they did. They might have done other accessories too. I'm not an expert on them. And uh, it's a brand that Hornby purchased at some point or became you know part of Hornby. And... They really don't exist anymore, but Hornby continue to use the uh, the brand name for their controllers, which is a bit odd, isn't it? I don't I don't know why they don't just call them Hornby, but that's what they do. They were associated, I think, with quality, um, but that's that. Gaming with Luke says reliably failing. <laughs> now that's a new term. Well, that's true. I mean, you can fail reliably, can't you? And uh, that capture card certainly does the damn thing. Um, so underdog. Overlander says, Sam, don't you do N-Gage reviews in the Model Railway... Oh, sorry, N-Gage news in the Model Railway news video. Um, I could do, yeah. I think I'm quite limited with, I think, time with the news video, so every little N-Gage update might be a little bit much, but I think major announcements is something I will probably start to cover on the Model Railway news. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, now that I review Engage stuff, I think that's something I will start to do more of. Uh, so there we go. The Kato Prince is quite plasticky. It sure is a Zuma. I won't let you know how I know this, but it certainly is. And uh, the quality of those isn't fantastic either. Don't ask me. Don't ask me how I know. 
Um, all right, so that's that. Let's do some wall of train stuff then. So this might be the last stream for now, but you're welcome to still send stuff in for the wall and I'll show it on the next stream. So samstrains at outlook.com, make sure you've taken the picture or drawn the drawing yourself. And uh, that's all happy days. So we've got this, which is an incredible picture from the average railway series fan. Beautiful, beautiful viaduct there. Um, I'd be interested to know which one that is. Is that the one in Scotland? I suppose the uh, the curve on the viaducts there makes it a bit more recognisable. But uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Thank you for that one. And then cross train spotting. This is uh, part of their fleet by the looks of things. I've uh, got some slightly more modern traction there. If you count the HST as modern, I guess you could do compared with the steamers. So cross train spotting. Thank you very much for that. And then we've got gaming with Luke. Uh, this will make you look twice probably. Looks like a Lego creation, which is awesome. And it's actually quite amazing, isn't it, what you can do with Lego trains, um, what you can create with Lego. I would never have thought half of the stuff I've seen is possible. And then Luke S sent in this. I think it was Luke that sent in quite a few different pictures. Maybe it was someone else. Um, but yeah, we've got some beautiful American locos here uh, in quite a dramatic landscape as well. Look at this banking that they've got um, to build the track on. Absolutely amazing. So thank you, Luke, and everybody else for those. I uh, saw some interesting things in the chat pop up. Um, we've got diesel elevators. Thank you very much to you. Americans love their long, heavy trains. I'd like to request a train of every American rail car you can realistically run. Well, that sounds difficult. Uh, with the Alco RS11 up front and several American diesels behind. I will definitely give it a try. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what else it was. I think there was another super chat I may have missed. Uh, it was JW Studios, and yeah, I did see that one. That's fine, no problem. All right, that's mine, says Gaming with Luke. He's in the chat. It's quite rare we get that, isn't it? Uh, people uh, from the Wall of Fame in the actual chat. So good stuff. Thank you for, um, well, I'm glad you saw it, and thank you for sending it in. Uh, that's from America, says Levi. Yep, it certainly is. Um, four zero. 414 and 844, says Hendrik. I guess that's uh, referring to one of the Wall of Fame uh, pictures. Gamer with Luke says Lego IVAT 2MT. Oh, it's a 2MT based on the, one of the preserved examples. Oh, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's give it another look. So apparently it's a 2MT. Ah, oh, yeah, you can see it. Yep, yeah, you can see it. they've got the wheel configuration right. And uh, yeah, the general proportions, especially the cab, actually. Look at that with the coal bunker as well. That is actually very 2MT-esque. Uh, fantastic. Yeah, very, very impressive. And it's interesting in the red as well. I do like that. All right. Uh, yeah, you missed my... So yes, I apologise, Mayo uh, and everyone else, if I have missed any Super Chats at this point. I will go through and read them all. Uh, it's just with me doing this on my own and setting up trains and running stuff. I do sometimes miss them. But I will go through and read them all. And if there are requests, they will be done. Anyway, let me run some more trains. So things are getting a little bit messy, but we're all good. The first one comes from Rathbaster, who wanted to see the Oxford N7 with some war wells, a railgun, and a brake van. I've almost managed to get this entire train Oxford only, which I think is probably what they were going for. But my Oxford rail brake van doesn't have a coupling on both ends because for some reason they've got like an adapter to lower the height of the coupling. And I've, well, it's dropped off mine, so it can only have one coupling on it. So I've had to use this because my railgun, uh, the same kind of things happen basically. It's only got one functioning coupling. Uh, so let's get that out of the way. Oxford N7, one of my favourites, so nice to see that running. And then we've got George Botterini who wanted to see the Caterpillar, which is Circle from Underground Ernie. Don't look her up unless you want a sort of brain injury. Um, but they also wanted to see her run with the Beatles wagons. So cheers, George, for that. I'm sure everyone's very excited to see her. And because she's awful, I don't bother servicing her or anything. So she's not running so well. She's running okay, but it sounds a bit grumpy now. So um, yeah, goodness knows what will happen with that. And then Hendrik again wanted to see the H1 with the hospital train and a Queen Mary brake van because Hendrik's not well. He says he's ill. So. I apologise for your illness. I don't know why I'm apologising. I sympathise with your illness, I guess I should say. And I hope you're feeling much, much better soon. And thank you for still coming along to the stream and uh, supporting. Uh, so thank you for that. There's your request. And uh, yeah, I guess everyone in the chat as well. 
Uh, wish Hendrik a speedy recovery. I'm sure you'll be well again soon enough. Let's see. Uh, Kelly, has she got the chat box seems to have frozen. That's probably an issue on your side, Kelly. It's, it's definitely working okay over here. So maybe try refreshing the stream. Sometimes the chat uh, can do strange things, as I have found before, but it's for me it seems to be working okay. Paul Burrows is off. All right, Paul, no problem. See you soon. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Diseased Caterpillar, says Peter Rukenzas. Yes, that's the unofficial title for Circle, uh, which is, I have to say, one I prefer. Yeah, the Diseased Caterpillar. <laughs> Still got this frozen. Go on then, I'll bite. Let's reactivate it. See what's happening at the moment. And the answer is nothing. Excellent. That's very exciting. Worth my time, I feel. And no doubt the next time I load it up, it'll probably have stopped working again. And there goes Circle. There is, uh, I do have a sort of morbid curiosity towards Circle still. Though. I still find myself occasionally looking at her and thinking, what on earth were they thinking? an interesting story about those um, they really slipped under the radar for me but from what others have told me when they when Backman released them um, nobody wanted them <laughs> you can't didn't you can't sort of blame them for it oh we caught it freezing that time um, so yeah what happened was eventually because no one was buying them because you know they were hideous and underground Ernie wasn't very popular from what I can tell they ended up being reduced massively and sold off really cheap and loads of people were buying them cheap to use the chassis for other things and, I don't know, the wheels, just scrapping them for parts, basically, because that's all they were good for. And that's really how I ended up with mine. I bought mine long after they were sort of released um, at a fraction of the price it should have been. And uh, I opened it up and found how rubbish it was, of course. Laughed at how ludicrous it was. And uh, I think I'm the only person to have been satisfied with my purchase because, you know, in terms of a comedic review, it was perfect. But to everyone else, it's just a, a terrifying disease on rails, which is the highest accolade I can give it without a straight, well, with a straight face, I guess. <laughs> Although, as it happens, it wasn't really with a straight face because uh, I kept having to laugh during the review and edit them, up, edit them out. Um, but yeah, there we go. Thank you very much for those requests, folks. Nice work, as always. And let's go down to the front and now whip some of these off. Hold your horses, H1. Hopefully uh, that's made Hendrik feel a little better anyway. Seeing the H1 with the ambulance coaches. Glad to have been some help. <laughs> Although, please do seek actual medical assistance if you need it. Um, I don't think this hospital train will do you any more good than maybe a slight placebo effect <laughs> i don't know uh, but yeah hope you're feeling better hendrik thank you for your request and let's whip circle off so that she doesn't upset anybody else there we go and the beatles wagons so i guess the idea behind that is one of the worst locos if you can even call it a loco you probably can't we're some of the worst wagons as well so cheers george for that one and with that, there are still lots of requests left over from last week. So here they come now. Uh, give us a shout in the chat if you spot yours. The first request comes from Kieran McGovern, who wanted to let Chloe choose a steam locomotive and have it haul a freight train of her choice. So I asked Chloe, and she picked the Caledonian Pug with some box vans. And I know why she did it. She owns a pug called George, a real one, a dog. <laughs> and so the pug, I think, was a very easy choice for her. And we've actually gone for the local I featured last week as my first ever engine. So those of you wanting to see it run, there you go. So thank you very much, Kieran McGovern. Then Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, who was at Disneyland last week, that is awesome, very exciting, wanted to see my newest 440 locomotive with the Disneyland-style coaches, which I have done, and that really does just look like something that you'd see at Disneyland. So awesome request. Thank you very much, Hendrik Motorsports Fan 5. And then GNW Studios picked a very, very cool request. They wanted to see a packet running with another pug, the LMYR pug. Lots of pugs requested today. Chloe will be pleased. With three other packets on war wells. Well, some of the war wells have high decks, so I've gone with a couple of the Laureate Ys just so that they can fit around the layout. But that's a very, very awesome idea five 040s in one train but only two of them running 
So JW Studios, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, and Kieran McGovern, thank you so much to you. The next request comes from Nomad, who also wanted to see a pug. We've got the LMS pug here hauling five plank wagons, uh, which they said was for clay, so I guess they're doing a China clay run here, and in reverse as well. So I've got the Loco going cab first. And also Nomad was asking about their county class request. I did double check that that was done for you, and it was. It was on episode three, so you should be able to catch it on that episode if you're interested. But thank you, Nomad, for the pug request. Glad to see the Humby LMS pug there still working okay. And then Caleb Chan, this was an interesting one, wanted to see the Hornby Class 101 DMU set. So that's what I've got going here. It's the three-car set. And this is supposed to be a memory of the Bay Area Rapid Transit Legacy Fleet retiring. Um, I still didn't figure out what this has got to do with that. Did, did they have some 101s over there um, in, the, in the Bay Area? I have no idea, but it's a cool request. Glad to see this DMU running again. Thank you very, very much to Caleb Chan and Nomad. And then, finally, we have one from Simeon Jackson, who I picked as the most creative of the episode. And it was to see the O-Gage Class 08 shunter with some wagons behind it with a 0008, a TT08, and an also uh, an N-Gage pannier, I guess, just so that we've got some representation of N-Gage on the train. So let's get this started. Thank you very much to Simeon Jackson for this very funny request. All of the different scales that I currently review models from in one train, which is very cool. So to Nomad, Caleb Chan and Simeon Jackson, thank you so much for those requests. All right, folks, that is it. That is the request sorted. And I've just spotted in one of my super chats that Hendrik says it is their cousin's birthday today. And everybody knows what that means. So I apologize to everyone else except Hendrik's cousin, to who I say happy birthday. And put it in the chat too. Yes, happy birthday is all round. <laughs> Happy train birthday to you. Happy train birthday to you. Happy train birthday. Happy train birthday. Happy train birthday. There you go. A big happy birthday, and hopefully you don't catch Hendrik's illness. <laughs> right, final requests for this stream and the series then. Here they come right now. Hendrik again, blimey, thank you very much for all the support, Hendrik. You wanted to see the W1 in the grate with the dynamometer car and the birdcage coaches. Uh, the W1's just out of shot, but you can see some of the coaches there. Williamtown wanted the A1 Terrier with a Great Northern Brake. I actually don't have a four-wheeled Great Northern Brake. It's a six-wheeler, so I put the four-wheel on for you, even though it's not a brake. An open van, a box van, and a brake. And then Hendrik again wanted to see the Backman Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle, which is a, a very nice and simple request. So let's get these going. And then i got to decide which of these has been the most creative, plus all the other ones that have come in. So, first of all, let me go through and say a massive thank you to everyone who has supported today with the Super Chat. And bless you all so, so much, because uh, all of this can go back into the channel to help make more videos and uh, keep the channel alive. So thank you so, so much for your support. And even if you just came to watch the stream too, Thank you to you as well for your support. So, we have Beaglington on sea, Sparky one to dine three times, thank you so much. ECD Railroad, Kelly Ashford Trains, um, thank you for your super chat. She says she hopes Miles will run with the Beatles vans, so I'm sure he will do one day. And then Beaglington on sea, again, Rathbaster, George Botterini, massive thank you to Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, who submits loads and loads of requests, so thank you to you. Uh, number one requester, I would say, for this series. William Town, whose request I do like very much, that's the one that's running right now. Uh, in fact, that might be one of my favourites, actually. Uh, I like the sort of eclectic mix of uh, rolling stock. A2020 Vision, Sideways 66779, I like that one as well with the A5. Yeah, I love that one. 
Um, Ghost, thank you very much, Ghost. I missed that one, but there you have. Um, Big Tomo as well, thank you for yours. I like that username. Underdog Overlander, John C. Oh, it was John C.'s birthday yesterday, and they wanted to see Edward with two troublesome trucks. Well, we'll do Edward's birthday song in a moment. No, not Edward's. Edward is the request. John, there you go. Happy birthday for yesterday, John. We'll get the song sung in just a moment. And this is where everyone signs off the stream. Al's Yard, Mayo Hosco, JW Studios, Diesel Elevators, thank you so much, Caleb Chan, and Chris Hart. And with that, I apologise for asking you to do this again almost immediately, but in the chat, please, happy birthdays for John C. Here we go. <laughs> Happy train birthday to you. Happy train birthday to you. Happy train birthday. Happy train birthday. Happy train birthday. There we go, there's definitely no shortages of uh, happy birthdays there in the chat, which is awesome. Um, well done folks for that one. Right, so I've been looking through the requests and I think I have my choice. Um, I'm going on my opinion here because it's the only opinion I got. And I have to say, looking at this Terrier running around with this particular train, let me get it in for you, here it comes. I absolutely love this. I love the small number of passengers that will be carried by this train, plus a little bit of local freight. Um, I just think it's creative in that it's realistic. You know, I just, you just imagine a Terrier back in the day doing this on a little branch line. So, Williamtown, you can have today's wagon, and if you'd like to claim it, send me an email with your delivery address, and I'll get that off to you ASAP. So, thank you to Williamtown and to everybody else for your awesome requests. We seem to have a bit of a stoppage here. What's happened to the hush hush? It's turning its wheels, but not going anywhere. That was weird. <laughs> I just gave it a nudge and it was fine. Something wrong with the track maybe? Nope. Okay, well, that was strange. Don't know how long it was like that. Was it, has it been like that from the start? <laughs> maybe. Well, there we go, it's bulleting off now, so that's, that's okay. I think. I'm going to keep an eye on it though, because that was weird. Don't like it when trains do weird things. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, we're all good. Right, so I'm going to give a few little hints as to what's coming up next. On the channel, that is, not on the stream. So next up, I've got a new train simulator video coming out, which is pretty exciting because Train Sim World have announced some... Well, not announced. They, they have announced it and then released it. Some new content, which is really exciting, and uh, I'm going to be playing that on Wednesday, so look out for that. And then I've got, coming up next, a new model by Hornby, which should be fun as well. I'm still yet to record that review, but that's up next week, which I'll be doing as well. So look out for that on Saturday. Um, for now, though, thank you so, so much for joining me for another series of Sam's Trains Live. We've got just enough time to do a few shout-outs and goodbyes before I sign off. So if you'd like a shout-out or if you'd like to ask something or say something, pop it in the chat right now and I will get to it before we say goodbye. <laughs> We've got proper proper birthday messages I can see in the chat. Happy train birthday, says TZTE Club. Um, train Boy, yes, thank you. Train Boy did try to tell me about the W1, which is coming up to that area again now, and it seems to be okay again. So, what happened? I don't know. It does seem to slow down there. I wonder if somehow it's... was. Did this local have an issue with its driving wheels lifting off the track? Maybe the front... As it was going on to that scenic section, maybe the front bogey was taking the weight of the loco too much. You know, as it goes up onto the scenic bit. Maybe that's what happened, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Normal Jungle 272, thank you very much. Says, bye Sam. This was a very fun series of live streams. Well, awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Uh, the Great Waluigi 647 says, these have been fun. Well, good, good. I'm glad they could bring you 
a little bit of entertainment on a Sunday. Uh, Matthew Damon rightly says, I didn't get blown up today. Yes, the request gods did not dictate to my demise today, which, which is pretty good. It's always a good day, always a good Sunday when I don't get uh, blown to smithereens. What's the weirdest thing you've done on this channel, says Trains Are Great? You know, I really don't know. There's a lot of weird things I've done on this channel. Anybody think of something? Off the top of my head, possibly riding along on a small metal trolley being hauled by about, I don't know, 30 engines. That was pretty weird, but there have been weirder things, I feel, that I can't remember them. William Town says, my request is, is based on something that would have been seen on Colonel Stevenson's light railways, such as the Kenton East Sussex Railway. Well, there you go. It did seem very realistic, actually. I uh, really enjoyed that one. It's the sort of train I, I would have loved to have seen if I was around back in the steam era. And, of course, it's not the sort of tr uh, train that you would see on a heritage railway, really, unless they were doing a special event. So, um, yeah, I liked that a lot. Uh, thank you, trains are great. That's very kind. Glad you enjoyed that. Normal Jungle 272, have you ever tr considered 5-inch gauge? Not personally, no. That stuff is a bit out of my price range, unfortunately. As amazing as a lot of it looks like. Um, 7805, Broom Manor Fan, Model Railwayman's Broth. Yes, that was pretty... Well, that was more horrifying than weird. But, uh, yeah, whatever word you want to use, it's probably applicable to that. All right then, folks. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very, very much for your support. I hope you enjoyed the series of live streams. But for me, and all of my trains too, that's it. So thank you very much. Keep an eye out on the channel because I've got lots more exciting videos to come, even though the live streams are over. And thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And I'll catch you very, very soon. All right. Cheers, folks. You take care. Hey folks, thank you all very, very much for tuning in for another episode of Sam's Trains Live. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with another episode very, very soon. But in the meantime, please enjoy the videos that I'll be posting on my channel till then. And I will see you all very soon. Thanks again for your support, folks, and take care of yourselves.